first things first, we can download the add-on that I'm going to be using to do this work from github.com slash dreamspoon. There's Illumination. Current release is 0 0.5. I'm going to download the zip file that comes with it. Go to Blender and install the add-on. In my preferences, I'll go to add-ons and then install. Then get that file that I just downloaded. Install from add-on. Enable it. 0 0.5. And now we'll load the demo files. To demonstrate some of the problems of procedural texture sliding, I'll show what happens when two cloth sims are used with two different procedural texture types. One of them is generated with texture coordinate and the others with geometry. They're hooked up to noise textures, so they should produce basically the same thing. To begin with, they look almost the same. However, if we drop them as cloth sim, one of them changes its texture over time and the other maintains it. The material with the texture coordinate generated input to a noise texture maintains its texture colors. The one with the geometry position changes. Maybe that's something you don't want. So you use texture coordinates generated. That's one kind of fix. The next problem that comes up is when we use our fix of texture coordinates, which works fine. When we use our texture coordinates, then we do not have the problem of a sliding texture. When we use our geometry coordinates, we get an advantage though in variety. We have three different textures, all with the same material on them. And these are the geometry coordinate input. On the bottom, we have our texture coordinate input. They're correct when the cloth sim is run, but they look the same from the top. We have duplicated them. How can we fix this? To solve this problem, we can add object location to our texture coordinate that's generated. Let's see what happens. We have three. I'll show you. It's three objects with the same material, but they have different looking textures on the top because we've added our t object location. Each one of these has a different location. An X going from negative 14, negative 7 to 0. And when we drop them, they look fine. Uh, we can have a variety of textures with a fix, and that works fine. But there's another problem that comes up if we're trying to use this on rigid bodies. If we go to the rigid body demonstration, We have four different cubes. And when I just run the simulation to show quickly what's happening, each of the four cubes is has a slightly different texture on it to begin with. But when they are dropped, two of them maintain their procedural texture and two of them have a sliding texture. Let's see what's going on. With the first one on the left that maintains its texture with no slide, we have a regular texture coordinate generated. For the second one, this is our geometry, and that's the one that's obviously wrong. That's in there just as a control case. The third one has our texture coordinate generated, as should be, and our object info location, so that we can duplicate it multiple times and it will have different textures each time. We should be able to run our simulation 
and it should hold its texture because we're using the same solution we used with the cloth sim. But this doesn't work because it's a rigid body sim. To fix this problem, we're going to use something that a script does, the thing that we downloaded at the beginning. It adds two sets of texture coordinates that combine to make an XYZ coordinate. So it stores the original positions of the vertexes as UV coordinates. Each of these vertexes has its XYZ position stored already. So when I manipulate it, I'm just moving and warping the texture that's already there. If I want to redo it, I can even go to modifiers, unhide these two UV map projections. Now that I've got it warped, the noise texture has been fixed. There we go. Suppose I warp it that way and that way. Suppose I apply these two UV project modifiers after exiting edit mode. Now I can move the object around, I can run the simulation, and it maintains the correct texture. The next demonstration is what happens when we use this technique on cell fracture. Cell fracture is a really nice add-on. comes built into Blender. I can search for C-E-L-L type cell fracture. I've got it enabled already. So what this will do is take something like a cube and really nicely break it down into a whole lot of little teeny pieces. Tiny pieces like this. Really quickly. Look at that. Hundreds of little pieces automatically. And then what we can do is add rigid body, do a simulation. Let's see what the textures look like on it first. Drop those and see what happens. Wow, four different effects. The one on the left has our texture coordinate. Let's just see the shaders to be sure. We'll just start the simulation to move it a little bit. Make the background a bit brighter so you can see more. On the left, you can see that our texture, although it does not warp when the body moves, it looks like it's tiled. And when you get to those very small pieces of the fractured cube, they look like they're tiled very, very small. That's a bit of a problem. To solve that, we might do something like this, where we use our geometry. But again, that only solves it when it's not moving, so we can't use that. Here's another solution, but it's a little bit strange. Things are correct, but a little bit funny. We're using our object info location and our texture coordinate generated this should work. Except that it stretches. Also, it seems to have a weird tiling problem when we look closely at it. The final solution is one provided by the script add-on, XYZ to UVW. I've already applied it to this cell fractured cube, and I'll show how to do that later. When we run it on this cube, we can move our cube pieces apart and notice that they maintain their 3D coordinates correctly. The mapping is working. Let's see what happens. Oh, good. So how would we do that? How would we apply this to multiple objects at the same time? I'll do a demo. Hide all of these objects. And we're going to build a self-fractured cube. I'll just add a cube. With 
with my F3 key, I will pull up my menu and cell fracture. If I use the default settings and press OK, I get a fractured cube into eight little teeny cubes. That's the original. Eight little teeny cubes. That's not exactly what I want. So let's change our cell fracture settings. We're going to add half. We're going to give noise 0.5 and our recursive shatter so we get smaller pieces broken down into smaller pieces again. Level 2. Okay. See it go. And here's our cell fractured cube. Let's pull out the original and delete that. Move all our pieces into new collection just to keep them separated. Call it frack. And so with these pieces that we have here, they do not have any material on them yet. We can use our Olumen add-on that we downloaded, the XYZ to UVW area. Click on XYZ to UVW. And now we have our cube with the procedural texture that does not slide. So we can add that to a sim with rigid body, rigid body add. Some of the objects couldn't get rigid body. Let's see what happened. Well, I guess it was just some edge cases. Let's see, where are we on the map? Bring our new fixed cube up and about. Let's go smash the biggest. Get that in a good place. Yes, all right. Let's go. Great. And all the little pieces are not having the warping problem. We don't see any procedural texture slide on the fixed pieces. That's great. Suppose, though, that you have a texture or material already on your object before you do your self fracture. How would we fix an object or multiple object, which is the problem usually, that need to have this XYZ to UVW mapping? Let's do our cube, add a texture as an example, call it example diffuse. And say we want to change the color of it up, a little bit bluer, add our light back. A little bit darker. So with our cube, we want to add the cell fracture. Add cell fracture. Noise 0.5, recursive shatter, recursion 2, okay. And after we delete out the original cube, we have all our little pieces that have the same material on them. And that's great. Same material, that's great. Suppose we want to put on XYZ to UVW to all of these. Let's do our original button, XYZ to UVW. But it's not showing. It hasn't changed anything. Our original material is still on all of those pieces. Do we have to go to all of the pieces and 
remove our material so that we can have the proper XYZ to UVW material? No, we don't have to do it one at a time. Instead of pressing XYZ to UVW with the defaults, we're going to change it, add to existing material, and I already have a setup going. So I'm going to leave my colors unconnected. So when I press XYZ to UVW, it will add the shader nodes to the already existing material, the example diffuse. And it's not adding multiple times, multiple copies, it's one copy. And we can add our own color, node, texture. Maybe we want a Musgrave, Musgrave texture. Plug that in, see what happens. Aha! And let's add rigid body for something interesting. Add rigid body, active. Cannot add to some, that's okay. Run the sim, it falls, good. I'll move all these into a new collection. Call it rack two. Now we can see all of our stuff in our frac 2. We'll just select all of that. Bring back bring back all of the other stuff. Cube go up. We'll smash the most. We'll bring it back a bit. Here we go. That light is not bright enough. Where is that light? Okay, light. Let's move you around a bit. There we go. That's better. Okay, let's see what this can do. Oh, good. We can see that our... We can see that our XYZ to UVW mapped object is maintaining its procedural texture, not sliding around. And each piece connects together to make a nice unified hole at the beginning. No seams, no weird duplication of the texture, and it's easy. It's a one-button solution. You might have to click a second button. You might have to click a third button, maybe. Add to existing material and color type unconnected. Well, that's about it. If you like this stuff, uh, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more, you can hit the subscribe button.